The world champion Springboks are back at the top of the world rugby rankings. And in this video, you are going to get a front row seat as I explain to you how exactly it happened. Despite being the world champions and having won 15 of our last 17 test matches, South Africa found itself in second position in those world rankings behind Ireland. A lot of people have questioned how is that even possible? We won the Rugby World Cup, we won the Rugby Championship, we've got the Mandela Plate, we've got the Freedom Cup, we've got the Qatar Airways Cup, and yet we're still second. What is going on here? Well, the reality is, despite everything that I've just explained, and probably what you have been thinking, that's not quite how the rankings work. Let me explain. So to understand why the Springboks have been so successful and still not at number one in the rankings, we need to look at how the world rankings are actually calculated. It's a bit of a complicated system, so bear with me while I try to get through this. Because it's not just all about winning, it's a little bit more complex than that. The World Rugby Rankings are actually based on what they call a points exchange system. Essentially, teams gain or lose points based on their results, so that's kind of obvious. But not just any result. This system takes into account three key factors. Number one, the match result. Number two, the relative strength of the opposition as well as the team that is actually involved in the match. So both teams' relative strength is taken into account. And number three, the margin of victory. Oh, and by the way, home advantage is also weighted into the calculation. So for example, if the Springboks beat the All Blacks, we don't just get points for the win. The rankings also consider New Zealand's strength, which in this instance is obviously very high, the score margin, and whether it's a home or away match. That's why a team might win a match and not actually move in the rankings. And here's where it gets interesting. Matches at the Rugby World Cup actually count for more rankings points. Once you get into the knockout matches, the points that would be awarded are actually doubled in the rankings. And that's why you would see that no matter where you are before the tournament begins, generally, as long as you win the Rugby World Cup, you will be the new number one team in the world at the end of the tournament, as was the case for the Springboks last year. Now, obviously, that was played away from home or a neutral venue, as they may say. But let's look at, take a look at what South Africa have done this year. Yes, we played Wales away from home. Then we had two at home against Ireland. Remember, we lost the second of those two. We also had Portugal at uh, home and then two away against Australia, two at home against New Zealand and home and away against Argentina. Then most recently away against Scotland. In the rankings, the home team is treated as though they are already three points ahead of their current rating. Now, this makes it harder for them to gain points for winning and easier for the away team to gain points. So you can see South Africa beating the All Blacks at home is not as effective as the Springboks beating Australia away from home, for example. We lost to Argentina in Santiago del Estero, you might remember, but if we had won that match, we would have picked up more points as opposed to the win that we had against them at the Mbombela Stadium. Now, margin of victory is also something that is factored in, but not as much as you might think. Winning by a huge margin, like 50 points, for example, doesn't significantly alter your ranking if the opposition is weaker. So you remember we put 60 points past Portugal in that test match in Bloemfontein, but according to the rankings, that's something that was largely expected of us to be able to do against an opponent like Portugal, who are obviously lower down in the rankings, so it didn't actually help us. So, for example, if you were thinking, oh, we'll just organize tests against Portugal and Uruguay and Georgia and Chile and whip them all, and then that way we get to number one, it's very, very unlikely that you can do that unless you are a team that is at a similar level. So if let's say you're Fiji, you can organize away tests against those teams and if you win all of them, you'll go flying up the rankings just to give you an idea of what can happen. So despite winning that Rugby World Cup, our defeat at home to Ireland was something that counted against us because obviously for them, being the away team, playing against a team that is also highly ranked, that is what 
helped to propel them to first place in the rankings, unfortunately, from our point of view. But a series of consistently high performance matches from the box, winning all those tournaments, as I mentioned, and then coupled with our win against Scotland at Murrayfield and Ireland losing to the All Blacks. Thank you very much to our old friends in New Zealand for that one. It meant that the box were back at the top of the tree. So let's have a look at what those rankings currently look like. We're going to start with the bottom five in the top ten. Starting from the bottom, Italy are in tenth place. Uh, they, of course, lost to Argentina this last weekend. So Argentina would have benefited from that in terms of them being the away team, okay? Fiji, beautiful away win against Wales. So that's helped them. They are now ninth. They would be higher than Australia, but they also had a really good away win against a stronger opponent like England. So that's how that's come about. England have slipped to seventh. And then we have Scotland, who are in sixth position. I actually think Scotland have overtaken England despite losing to South Africa, which is quite interesting. But I think the Scots would have been expected to lose to South Africa, given the, given the difference in their rankings, whereas England were expected to win against Australia. So that's probably what happened there. Now, the top five, Argentina, with a nice away win against Italy. That's brought them into the top five. France, they are in fourth place. They had an expected win against Japan, so that wouldn't actually have helped them. And then if you look at the actual rating points, Look at Ireland, 90.58, New Zealand 91.21, South Africa 92.46. There's not a lot in that, so the Springboks will need to continue winning. England, unfortunately, ranked as low as number seven. That's not favorable from our point of view because we kind of have to win that. And, it's not, and even if we do, it's not going to help too much except for the fact that it's an away game. The All Blacks are playing France, a win there, that is something that could help them a lot. And then, of course, Ireland, uh, they have now slipped to third position in the rankings. It's a testament to the brilliance of our coach, Dr. Rassi Erasmus, and the resilience of our warrior players like Sia Colisi, Ioban Etzebet, Peter Steff de Toy, and Andre Pollard, just to name a few, that the box have reclaimed the number one spot in the rankings. Now, if all of this seems a little bit complicated and even overwhelming and even unfair to you, I'm going to tell you something that I've always thought was quite funny from a different sport and their rankings. In golf, once upon a time, the rankings were sponsored by Sony, so they were called the Sony rankings. A lot of people were not impressed by the methodology behind how those rankings functioned and nicknamed them the phony rankings. Perhaps you think that the rugby rankings are also phony. Let me know in the comment section down below what your opinion is of these rankings. Do you think they're accurate? Are they fair? Is it just a load of nonsense? Or is it just a fun talking point at a bry and we don't really take it overly seriously, except maybe when we are number one? Then it's actually quite a cool thing, isn't it? Well, speaking of being at number one, South Africa first got there when they won the Rugby World Cup in 2007. We did it again in 08, 09, and we returned to number one in 2019 and wouldn't you just know it, one man was part of all of those instances. His name is Franz Stein, and I did an exclusive interview with him on this channel a while back. You can watch that video. It's appearing on your screen right over here. And going back to 07, when we first became the number one team in the world, Osturant was in that team. I did an exclusive interview with him. That's over here. Interestingly enough, both men were Springboks who won the Rugby World Cup twice, and they were the first two to do it. So go on over, click on one of those, enjoy the videos, and I will speak to you next time.